Turn your eyes upon Jesus And the things of earth will grow strangely dim In the light of His glory and grace What's up peeps? Welcome to another episode of Fresh Talk it feels like it's been a long time since I've talked to you guys, but it's really only been like over a week since our last podcast. So it's actually good to be back in the fold. And this time I have two brothers with me. These two brothers, I tell you, are phenomenal and they are something else. And they can actually bring something really, really heat and very spicy to the table. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. That's yes. it, man. So brothers... I'm going to give you the platform to introduce yourselves, yep. tell them who you are, what yep. you do, and also how's um, life been for you? Okay. What's up with you? Cool. Uh, Keith Reynolds, I am um, um, married to my best friend, Leanne Marie Reynolds. Together we have six children. That's it, six. Mm. And um, <clears throat> we live currently in Holland, Michigan. I am on staff at Western Theological Seminary as the uh, Associate Director of Admissions. Um, I think, you know, something unique about me, I, I mean, you have to get close to me to, 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 to know whether or not it's unique or not. But, um, yeah, I, I'm, you know, I like to read. Um, I like to college football is my thing. You know what I mean? And um, uh, I like to work out. So you do look good in shape. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, my name is Adam Penn. I am 37 years old. I hail from the steel city known as steel Pittsburgh. Mm. So I landed here in Holland, Michigan by way of Minneapolis. I was in sales and product management for a while. I am now enrolled in Western Theological Seminary. Mm. I'm uh, inching towards the end of my first year mm. there in uh, pastoral studies, getting ready to jump into the Masters of Divinity program. That's it, that's it. So uh, what I do in my free time, I'm also a gym rat. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, so there's that. Um, I'm a coach for West Ottawa High School football. Oh, yeah. And nice. yes, sir. And I, uh, I work at this place called Escape Ministries, where we uh, empower the youth to become young heroes. So mm, yeah. that's what a little bit about me. Back in my college years, believe it or not, people call me a freak of human nature. What? I'm always getting up early in the morning, like at four o'clock in the morning mm. to start to start devotions and then get the training going on because I'm into martial arts too. Oh, oh man. Wow. Yes. That's the discipline. Right That's there. discipline, man. That is. Yes. That's it. That's well, it. But uh, what's inspiring me to get up early in the morning is uh, Jesus because he rose early in the morning to have yes. time with the Father. Yeah. And that motivated made motivated me mm -hmm. because what better way to start your day than with a father? Hey Amen. There's no better way. Exactly, exactly. So my brothers and sisters, today's topic we're going to be talking about is a specific topic that a lot of people tend to like get into. A topic in which a lot of people may think not is a big deal, but it actually is a big deal. So through the Lord's grace, we're going to be talking and having some really deep insights on this and we pray that this touches your hearts and opens up your eyes to further truth about how Jesus deals with this and how he sees it. And the topic we're going to be talking about is it's not about being popular, it's about fulfilling your purpose. Yeah. Mm. That's it. That's it. Yes. That's it. And so and we live in a country where it seems as though popularity happens to be the top notch. Yep. everyone wants to be popular mm -hmm. yeah and yet there's nowhere in scripture where it says jesus is going to make you popular yeah in scripture that you find so many references and so many stories where jesus god gives you a purpose yeah a purpose for everyone and like a question i'd like to ask you gentlemen is like um why is purpose more important than popularity because mm -hmm. a lot of people may not understand why purpose is more important than popularity yeah so yeah. what's your view on that yeah let me go first yeah, yeah sure right. <clears throat> well first i would say um everyone is you know there are there are these there's a hierarchy of needs where where each and every individual has to have certain things satisfied you know in order for them to feel some sense of self-dignity self-worth self-value so for instance if you don't have 
a place to stay, there's a home insecurity. If you don't have food, there's a food insecurity, um, uh, so on and so forth. I think one of the one of the needs that we have as humans, in as much as those two things are noted, there is a a need for significance. Mm-hmm. There is a there is a need to know that I am distinct and value. I'm not just one of the billions of people that occupy the earth. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes that need for significance drives us into this desire for popularity. Mm -hmm. Okay, which is really, I think, for most people, a desire to be seen, to be known, to not just be another number or statistic, Mm -hmm. uh, to be seen and known as someone with a particular set of skills and abilities. And because of that can bring influence to bear in some unique ways. I'm not just human. I'm not just a man or a woman. I'm not just black or white. I'm not just a student or an employee. And so I think that need feeds the or drives if it is not properly addressed or acknowledged, Mm -hmm. then what happens is our only idea of achieving significance Mm -hmm. is through popularity, Mm -hmm. an aggregation of likes on Instagram, Mm -hmm. uh, a a certain amount of attaboys if you are into athletics, you know what I mean? A certain amount of guys or girls that are attracted to you. The, the the fashionista, your fashion sense, okay, your 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 need for significance, which is legit and noble and right, um, if it is not addressed and affirmed, then what tends to happen is we just pursue popularity, mm-hmm. okay, assuming that if we are popular, that's what makes us significant, mm-hmm. okay, and so popularity and purpose are not the same thing. Um, they are distinct from one another. Popularity is has a lot to do with how you are perceived by your your peers that are near to you. Um, popularity has a lot to do with the way in which you do something that satisfies the pop interest, the pop palette of a particular group of people. It doesn't necessarily transcend. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can be a really good dancer and be popular to the dance crew because they like to dance. But if I'm around a bunch of people that can care less about dancing, my ability to dance doesn't land really well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Purpose is transcendent. Mm-hmm. It's the thing that governs your life despite what you do that generates attention. Okay. And, and to understand your purpose, like on some level, you got to resist the tendency, um, to want to be popular. Mm -hmm. So that's very good, brother. Yeah. You want me to follow that? (laughs) (laughs) Um, man, the difference between popularity and purpose for me, it comes down to, the desire for somebody's their, their impact. I think yeah. people want to be influential and they get influence and impact mixed up a lot. They get purpose yeah. and popularity mixed up a lot. But if you are impactful, therefore you may become popular because you yeah. have an impact on just your sphere, your small corner of the world, right? Yeah. The people that want to be popular or have influence necessarily, they want to tr- try to affect a number of people that is beyond their reach yeah they begin to start having such as the god complex and they yeah. start to have they start to thirst and yearn and the want to be wanted in such a toxic way that the behaviors start to become negative just so they can be like you said That's to piggyback it. off what you said just, yep. to, just to be seen yep. and there is a healthy way for humans to interact with other humans so that need can get met. Yep. But we are so selfish as yeah. a culture mm-hmm. yeah. collectively mm-hmm. that I don't believe that we are showing each other enough love. Like you said, we're not yep. leading with love too much anymore. Yep. Yep. And people are starting to act out in, I mean, insane, asinine type of ways just for, yep. just for attention mm-hmm. or just to get a million likes so they could be checked, verified as a influencer mm-hmm. so, mm-hmm. yeah people get yep and without good. being grounded or rooting or have knowing that your identity is in christ jesus mm-hmm. they're never going to have 
the validation in which you're looking for anyways. And so yeah. mm -hmm. that's it. That's kind of that's kind of where I sit with that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yep. Something else about purpose is that unlike popularity, there is power and grace in purpose. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And unlike per unlike popularity, like purpose will not fade away. It will not be taken away just because someone doesn't like you. That's it. And that's it. Because like someone doesn't want to follow you. Yep. Yep. And popular like um popularity is based upon how many fans you can get. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Yes. But um there's something that, that I want to share with you guys that's found in Hebrews yep. chapter eleven. Yep. I'm gonna look at eleven twenty-four to twenty-six. That's a thick Bible, brother. Mm. It was given to me by a sister of mine from church. Awesome. Yes, who happens to be the same one who gave me my first Bible. Amen. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So yeah, Hebrews 11, 24 to 26. By faith, Moses, when he became of age and refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, mm -hmm. choosing rather to suffer afflictions with the people of God than to enter, than to enter, than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, yeah. esteeming the approach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. Yep. And by Moses' example, and by Moses' examples, like when you choose purpose over popularity, you are choosing to do the work of God that leads to a much greater reward than what this world can give to you, and also you are building a legacy. That's it. Absolutely. 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 Yes. Yeah. And when like um when you know and you fully accept the purpose that God has given to you, yeah. like it doesn't matter what people's opinions about you are. It's, you don't care about what people say about you mm -hmm. or what their yeah. opinions about you or even what their lifestyle is. Yeah. I would say I agree. I agree. I would say I call that 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 not caring. Mm -hmm. I refer to it and it, it, it's a bit of a sophisticated word and terminology, but but you can find your own synonym mm -hmm. to, to get at it. But I call that, I refer to that as righteous indifference, mm -hmm. which, which, mm -hmm. which means it's, it's something that you have to develop. Mm -hmm. Because again, as humans, we all need and desire uh, significance. Mm -hmm. Right people to say to us, mm -hmm. you matter and you are distinct, mm -hmm. okay? So when you make a decision mm -hmm. to not let that thing be popular driven, mm -hmm. pop based things like I can dribble, I can run. When you resist like the tendency to let that be the sum total of your significance, but rather your purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do have to not care mm -hmm. what other people say, mm -hmm. but you got to practice not caring. Mm -hmm. You got to develop what I'm referring to as indifference. Mm -hmm to what people would try to say is the extent of who you are. Mm -hmm. You are a good athlete. Mm -hmm. That's just what that, I do. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's not it. You're, you're a good instructor. That's, that's just what I do. Mm -hmm. I have a purpose beyond the thing that I'm doing. And mm -hmm. you got to develop this ability to say, appreciate it, but I'm more than that. Mm -hmm. Or where folks would not recognize to to not allow your ego to be bruised because you don't get the attention mm -hmm. because your purpose may not necessarily generate a lot of popular interests. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you got to develop mm -hmm. this. You got to practice not caring. And right. what I'm referring to as it's, it's developing a sense of indifference towards the unhealthy attention mm -hmm. or the absolute lack of of attention mm -hmm. so that you can really orient around what is your mm -hmm. purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I call it well, fear of man. That's just, yep. You got the lack of fear of man. Uh, it's, yep. I had a coach one time tell yep. me, he was like, the crowd that wants to crown you mm -hmm. and the crowd that wants to crucify you, yep. you can't let either one of them sway you. That's it. So that's, that's it. And that, that always, that that's all, it. yeah, that always that's stuck, it. that always stuck with me. So I love it. <clears throat> crown or crucify. Yeah. Whatever. Like it, Cause there's always, no matter what you do, no matter what decision yep. you make, you could score a hundred touchdowns. Yep. Someone's going to remember the time you fumbled. Yeah. Right. You can't make everybody happy. Exactly. Yep. So, yep. There's always going to be a, a crowd that wants to crown you. There's That's always it. going to be a, one, a crowd that would like to crucify, crucify you. you. I love that. Either way, they can't they can't sway you. Yep. You mm -hmm. know. So. Yep. Love it. Love it. Amen to that. Yes, there are a lot of people like Taylor Swift, Conor McGregor, um, 
also people like um, the Kardashian sisters and well the Kardashian families I'll yeah, say yeah. that mm -hmm. who are yes making a big load of money who are living luxurious lives and yes there are giving people entertainment becoming yep. even more popular there are those who are the unpopular faithful followers yes. of Jesus yes who are really making a difference in people's lives mm -hmm. even if they are not being recognized about it absolutely but they are being recognized by the father in heaven yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah well that's the thing is when you really choose to follow the way mm -hmm. a lot of your actions is going to be counterculture yeah right so you're not going to get the affirmations that you're looking for from your colleagues or from your peers yeah you know and that's when it comes back to having that loss of fear of man or with that holy righteousness that's it is that the affirmations that I need come from my identity in the Heavenly Father. That's it's it. not going to come from Joe Schmidt down the street. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. ain't, ain't going to be too many people celebrating you because you choose to forgive rather than retaliate. Mm -hmm. Ain't going to be too many people, you know, you ain't going to go viral necessarily, excuse me, <clears throat> by hanging out with the, the neighbors or the peers in the high school that everybody wants to t talk about and laugh at. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so you do, you have to develop that kind of indifference to, um, uh, to, 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 be, to be the person of Christ in flesh and blood in contemporary times. Mm. And know that it ain't going to be the quick path to popularity, mm -hmm. but there is no better one to follow um, as you seek to live your life on purpose than Jesus. So. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. Yeah, and speaking of which, and you two had touched base on this a little bit, but I'd like for us to touch base on it more. Yep. So, like, why is it that youth and also adults, adults are so focused to becoming popular instead of taking the time to find and fulfill the purpose that God has given to them? Yeah. One is mm. is really understandable. I, I don't think most folks know their sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, if you ask someone what is their purpose, there most people and myself at different seasons of life would refer to the things that generated pop attention. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And for me, that was mm -hmm. stuff that was that I did on the block or on the football field. You know what I mean? And so we tend to think that what we're popular or what we are known for is synonymous with our sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so that does create a bit of a delay. Like you, you have to come to a place where the thing that has gotten so much attention, you, you, you start to get weary of it. You start to realize, man, this is, this ain't it. And, and whenever you come to that point, and you can recognize it, then you can get curious about, okay, what is my purpose? And and I think the delay practically is, again, some people just legitimately don't know their sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. And I don't think <clears throat> this is like knowing your purpose is for the elite. Mm -hmm. I just think, I think legitimately people are, are convinced that the thing that they're good at is the thing that they are purposed for. And there is a lack of curiosity, therefore, then to inquire, to pray, to wrestle with what really is my purpose. And so sometimes, if not most times, you come to this season of life where you're 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 popular for all kinds of reasons. Some of them may even be legit. Not mm -hmm. always is it something bad. You know what I mean? But you start to realize, man, this this just is not it. Mm -hmm. And and what a person does in that point in that moment and the degree to which they are curious mm -hmm. will determine the degree what the degree to which they transition from a pop centered approach to living mm -hmm. to more of purpose living purpose approach to life. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if they if they if they never get curious about their purpose, um, if they never, never like um choose to be curious about it, then that will absolutely delay the mm -hmm. degree to which they walk in purpose as opposed to just pursue popularity. Mm -hmm. Or just even the popular choice. I, mm -hmm. It's, it's just funny that you brought this up is that I was just having this conversation not too long ago is that uh, about two years ago, I had started really wrestling with this same with the same issue because mm -hmm. I had made the big promotion. 
I had moved out of my home state. I had the girlfriend who was, I think at the time, maybe seven years, nine years, my junior, you know, you what would seem from an optic standpoint, yep. you he he made it. You would you would have it all. Mm -hmm. But once you get there and you get off the private jet and you get done at the board meeting and everyone yep. signed their name at the bottom at the dotted line, you go back to the hotel and you're just like there's got to be more, you know, mm -hmm. there really does have to be more. It was so unfulfilling. Yep. So whenever I started, <clears throat> excuse me, whenever I started really wrestling with trying to, to identify what my purpose was, I had an even difficult, I had an even more difficult time because I had no idea who I was. Yep. So I had to start stripping labels that the world had put on me and other people yep. had put on me and all of them weren't necessarily negative labels. A lot of them were, but they weren't all necessarily negative labels. But for me to find my identity, they say, know thyself. To know thyself, know thy God. That's for, it. <laughs> so That's you have it. to know your God first, right? That's so it. I was I went through a season where I was convinced that it's hard to shake a good bad reputation that's it my reputation was awful but i was so good at being yep. bad that reputation was sticking to me and i it, you really had to do some some internal work mm -hmm. there's yep. a lot of internal work so you could find your identity mm -hmm. and then find your purpose and then uh, and yep. offer that to the father and be like hey yep. this is yours show me what to do with it now mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. that's it yes. that's it yeah going off to what you were talking about is yep. uh when people do not know what their purpose is yeah. and they spend so much time trying to fight instead of going to the one who does know That's what it. their purpose is, they start to like experiment on different areas of life. Mm -hmm. Some good and some are not so good. Yep. And some of them can lead them away from finding their purpose and ultimately lead them away from God. Yep. Yep. It's another, another one. And like... Um, so instead of turning to God, we turn to other people. Yep. And eventually, the more we continue to turn to people, eventually we're going to be living of seeking approval of people. That's a fact. That's a fact. And that's no different than people pleasing. That's a fact. And we all and all of us know like how Jesus feels about people that's it. pleasing. Like, <laughs> that's it. Jesus did not come to please people. He came to save people and that's to it. lead people to God. That's it. To free people from sin. That's mm -hmm. a fact. That's a fact. Yes. So like let's help the so let's help the viewers to understand like um what can purpose do that pop what can purpose do for them that popularity can't do for them? Mm -hmm. So popularity does not get at your inherent value mm -hmm. like popularity only only can satisfy the things that you it can it can answer the question of your ability mm -hmm. which is important mm -hmm. again like it, it it matters in the equation of figuring out your significance knowing what you can do is part of that equation mm -hmm. you know what i mean i could paint I cannot dance. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can like knowing what you can do is important. And so so that's where that peer popular sort of speak influence um it does give the ego the necessary massage. Mm. You know what I mean? When you live in a big big world like ours, again, people want to want to what distinguishes me. Mm -hmm. I can sing, I can dance, I can do whatever it is. And to have folks affirm that, even if it generates a bunch of likes on social media, even if it lands you in the lap of luxury because you do that thing really well, mm -hmm. like there's something about that that is needed and necessary. But what it cannot do is affirm your native inherent value, mm -hmm. who you are when you no longer can do the thing that generates so much attention. Mm-hmm. Because at some point, the thing that you do that generates attention to crown you, yeah. the audience will at some point flip and crucify you. Mm -hmm. The song, the, the album that you released, the first one, dope. The second one, trash. We just seen it recently in basketball. Mm -hmm. Girls who were so affirmed because of their basketball prowess. But then if you go on social media getting murdered because they missed an assignment. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so that's what popularity does. It takes you on the rise up and down, up and down. Purpose stabilizes you because purpose, similar to what Adam says, gets at who you are. Mm -hmm. 
no matter what anyone says about how I perform on any given moment, I know I am Fannie Mae Sanders' mm -hmm. great grandson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No matter what anybody says about me, mm -hmm. I'm LZ Pruitt, the Deacon's grandson. Mm -hmm. No matter what anybody says to me, I am the husband of Le Leanne Marie Reynolds and the father of Anissa, Isaiah, Aliana, Gabby, Nevaeh, and Elijah. That is a reinforcement of my purpose. Mm -hmm. Take all of the stuff away, I'm left with that. And mm -hmm. that is what will sustain me, my sense of purpose, my value, apart from the pop interests, apart from my mere abilities, which generates attention and scrutiny. It is my purpose that allows me to enter into this cold world and not allow my emotions to fluctuate mm -hmm. up and down. That's what pop does. Mm -hmm. That's what popularity does. Okay. Mm -hmm. But purpose, it's, it closes you in substance and it stabilizes you to navigate really the contradictions of life in a way that popularity just, just cannot. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that's the significance of Jesus. When he came <clears throat> up out of the waters of baptism before he began his public ministry, when John the Baptist baptized him, the voice from heaven said, this is my son, period. And as he was commissioned into the world, he's a miracle worker. Mm -hmm. He is not the son. He is this. He is that. But what sustained him was the mere fact of knowing I am the son of God, period. And, and that's true for him. It's true for us. Amen. That's wild that you said stability, because that's the word I was circling around. See, yep. for me, I believe that purpose gives you stability. Mm -hmm. Purpose will put a battery in your back that no yep. amount of schoolwork, no amount of extracurricular activity, no amount of debt, no amount of yep. celebratory yep. parties can drain you from. Whenever you have purpose and whenever you know that you have a word from God and you have an assignment from our Heavenly yep. Father, there is nothing, and I'm telling you, sir, there is nothing in the world that stops you from that. It's a fact. Popularity, they can take, they didn't give it to you, so they can take it yep. you see what i'm saying you remember that old Baptist baptist song the world didn't give it this joy i have inside of me the world didn't give it to me the world can't take, take it, it away, away. Yep. that's the same thing about purpose whenever you realize that you have purpose yep. you know after you get grafted into the into the the, the body of the, the heavenly body it's a it's a it's a rabbit pit bull yep. off the leash yep. that hasn't been fed in a week yeah don't get in its way mm. yep. you know i think for me once i started um wrestling with what my purpose is going to be and started actually walking into the calling every day i wake up you and i've had this conversation yep. we were leading to roxanne uh, i've had this conversation with her yeah there's one way you, you can't possibly fall into a depression whenever someone says the person that needed to hear you hasn't heard you yet yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's that simple yeah mm -hmm. yeah I think it's for me, anyways. Yep. That but yeah, yeah, it's the purpose gives you, I mean, an insurmountable amount of go. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it facts. Most, yes, it most certainly does. And like in the past, present, and also in the future too, there yeah. have been a great deal of number of people worldwide who have made quite a name for themselves. Mm -hmm. So like, um, of course, Michael Jackson. Yeah. Of course. Um, Thomas Edison, yeah. uh, Kobe Kobe Bryant mm -hmm. was another one, and also Hulk Hogan was another one. Like, all of them have built quite an imp impressive career. They yeah. have. But you know, and even though there are people out there who are look like they're living like kings and queens, that still doesn't change the fact that there are at least, I repeat, at least two common flaws that we all share yeah. that per that on purpose can just help you to thrive through them. Mm -hmm. The first one is distractions. Yep. For example, mm -hmm. comparison. It's a mm -hmm. fact. It's a fact. How often do we humans to this very day still compare ourselves to other people because we see what they have that we want? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Like we tend to think that oh we're not good enough, oh no one's gonna recognize us because 
we don't have what other people have. Mm -hmm. And so we work so hard to get those things that uh, we see other people are not realizing that, hey, it's not our time to get those yet. Mm -hmm. There's a time and a place that the Lord will provide for us, and it may not be in his will for us to receive those, but because he has something better. Yeah. Like God knows our hearts more than we know our hearts. Yep. And yep. he knows what our desires are. So, mm-hmm. But he's no fool. He's wise. This is not Santa Claus. This is not the tooth fairy. And this is definitely not the Easter Bunny. This is God we're talking about here. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. And he knows when the best time to give to you what you are longing for. Yep. 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 You yep. just have to be patient and wait. That's a fact. <laughs> and like, um, when uh, per- like on purpose can dem- cannot diminish like um comparing. We have like um like too many times that we find ourselves or even don't see that we are still comparing ourselves. And God keeps reminding us like, I formed you into this womb. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I I know you even before you came into this world. Yeah. Like, if you continue to trust in me and abide in me, I can show you just how wonderfully and just how beautiful and marvelous you have been made. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when you accept the purpose, like, purpose can just make that fear of, or I should say, distraction of comparing blow away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, it can just blow away because you are focused on, like, what you had just yep. said, keep building up That's it. that focus, keep building up being content on completing the work that God has given to you. Yep. As a matter of fact, um, Nehemiah, like he had distractors who had their own opinions mm-hmm. about him. Yep. And what do you do instead of like going down and saying, and That's it. going down to their level and having an argument with them? Like, no, you stay focused on the task. That's right? it. Because God was like, just focus on what I've given to you. Don't worry about them. That's it. Mm-hmm. Just focus on what I've given to you, and at the end, you will see the rewards are so much worth it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like the rewards that the Lord has for us, like it is so worth going through the distractions or even the fears. And as a matter of fact, fear is the second flaw that we all share. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Because like um, when we like uh, fear, like um, how many times do we let fear dominate us? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How many times do we let fear control us? Mm-hmm. But through God, we have nothing to fear. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And our purpose, and our purpose can help us to thrive through our fears, help us to push through our fears. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because like the because like I said, the reward is so much more worth it. Like yes, like there's going to be pain mm-hmm. when you're doing the Lord's work. There is, and there's going to be distractions, and there's going to be people with their own opinions about them. Mm-hmm. And after all, God did say, it is not you that rejected, it is me that they rejected. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> so how, what about, I was also thinking on, thinking on what you said. I believe that people pick popularity before purpose because it's easier. Mm-hmm. I believe purpose is, is difficult. And you say, oh, if you stick to it, you'll have this reward in the end. Popularity is on, it's, 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 instant. it's instant gratification, mm-hmm. you know? I think that that's a big thing is that we don't have, we don't have patience anymore. We don't, there's no such thing as long suffering, mm-hmm. yep. you know, to, yep. to, 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 cause mm-hmm. that's what your purpose is going to be. It's going that's to it. be long suffering. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you have, that's a very, very, very good point. I mean, our, our world, we, we want instant gratification mm-hmm. and it's, it's amazing how nutritious a like on social media is for certain people. You know what I mean? But at some point you realize it's like, it's like, it's like the rice cakes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's got a crunch, it's got a little taste, but it ain't got no substance. Mm-hmm. And so the likes can only do so much for you. Yeah. Um, and if you can be honest, when you come to that place of realization, you know, like Adam alluded to in his own story of having so much that the world would look at and laud, and he's going back to his hotel room and he's feeling empty in a way that the money, the relationships, the opulence cannot feel, you know what I mean? And so for him and you and me as well, because we probably have a similar story or, or occurrence in our life where we realized that emptiness, that was the alarm. And instead of hitting the snooze button, we said, okay, we got to, we got to, we got to, we got to, we got to turn to the father, the author of our life. All right. But I think it would, we would be remiss if we did not also acknowledge as it relates to purpose and popularity, what's tricky is both of them. There is an element to which they are, um, 
they are externally reinforced. Oh, talk heavy. You, whatever you think you are good at, someone has told you. Mm -hmm. And it may be something that you become popular at or get popular attention because of. Similarly, your purpose. I shared the story of Jesus coming out of the baptism water and his father from heaven externally affirmed him as my son. My son. Mm -hmm. it, it was that voice that established his sense of purpose so that he wasn't schizophrenic as he began his public ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why he asked when he asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? Some say you're this, some say you're that. Who am I? My message and my mission has everything to do with the degree to which you know who I am. Mm -hmm. And we now know the story retroactively. Peter says, this is who you are. Mm -hmm. The miracles are the things that you do. Yeah. Casting out demons are the things that you do. Uh, prophesying are the things that you do. But your purpose, you are the son of God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Externally reinforced. So one of the challenges is... We, we likely have more people in our life that are reinforcing the things that generate popular interest than purpose. Mm -hmm. All of us. Mm -hmm. and, and I would say to those that are listening, like, and I know you're going to get here, I'm just saying it now, is you, if you're at that place of emptiness, where you are legitimately at a place where you're realizing all the things that have made you popular are, are not offsetting the emptiness inside. And if you're at this place where you are now beginning to be curious about what matters, what is more true of you, your purpose, than what has been said about you, mm -hmm. then I would say that is one of the many that is one of the few things in this world that you cannot do for yourself. You, you got to get in community. Mm -hmm. You, you got, I couldn't think of a better community than the church to help you grapple with this. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying this as someone who has also been burnt by the church. Mm -hmm. but the church is uniquely graced to be able to help folk find their sense of purpose. And your purpose is not if you're at a church making coffee for so folks on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Your purpose is not being at the door to greet people as they come to the into the building. That's a gift. That's an ability. That's something you've signed up to do. But your purpose is far deeper than that. Mm -hmm. And it is the people in that community. And if you are not at a church and you have really close friends, like you know who your close friends are. I would I would encourage folks to get with their friends and just ask the question. Yeah. Like honestly, man, what do you think my purpose is? And if they say, "Oh man, you could play basketball real good. Are you really good at that?" Press deeper and say, "Yeah, those are those are things that I'm good at." But that ain't my purpose. And they may be able to in conversation help you to find find yourself so yeah thank you for sharing that yeah and a question i like to ask you guys like is it possible that popularity popularity can lead people to sin Oof. Oh, easy <laughs> go ahead easy well yeah can popularity lead people to sin? only fans <laughs> like, you know like i hate to, i hate to be so crude but i'm being crude to be to, to prove a point yeah, here yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah people yeah. have gone this day and age, people go to, as I said it earlier, people go to extreme, extreme measures yeah. for popularity. Mm -hmm. The majority of those extreme measures are not healthy and or of God. Yeah. That's yeah. short and sweet for me. Yeah, That's it. absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it doesn't even have to be the crude examples. The crude examples are obvious. Like, yeah, you could do some goofy stuff mm -hmm. all in the name of generating popularity. You can lose your scruples. You can lose your morals to just trying to be him or her. You know what I mean? And we can count the ways of the people that are doing it and abounding and being wildly popular and they're doing things that tax their soul. 
You know what I mean? Um, but it doesn't have to always be the crude stuff. You know what I mean? Like you could you could generate a whole lot of attention doing things that pull you away from your primary responsibilities as a husband. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Like um, I was a former youth pastor and I was doing really good work as a youth pastor. And my oldest daughter and I have really had to repair our relationship because she saw dad's backside more than she saw my open arms towards her. I was doing a lot of stuff and the stuff that I was doing was generating Mm -hmm. arguably really good attention. Oh, Pastor Keith, you know, this conference you did with these young people was really good. We did this conference and X amount of kids gave their hearts to Jesus. But I had a baby girl at home who wanted to see her dad and I was gone. Um, and, and I'm a dude who was raised without my father. You would think I would know, Mm -hmm. but there was a sense of like, I'm doing the Lord's work and, and so lost in it that, that it was pulling me away from my child. And I would consider that sinful activity. Mm -hmm. I wasn't running into another woman's arms. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, you know, kind of doing debauchery, mm-hmm. you know, engaged in debauchery, but my baby girl, who needed the affirmation of her dad, um, was more gone than I was present. You know what I mean? And I would say I wasn't trying to be popular. Um, I was trying to be purposeful. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But in that sense, um, yeah, my 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 the attention that I was getting um, in the work that I was doing fueled the motiv- fueled the motivation to keep doing it and doing it more. And 20 years later, I realized that some of the stuff my daughter was, the ache in her soul was directly related to that season of life. You know what I mean? So you do, you can, you can get lost even in stuff that is legit. Mm -hmm. Um, and find yourself in a compromising state. I firmly believe that when you hear of stories of pastors, clergy, men or women falling into extramarital relationships, I firmly believe a lot of it has to do with this imbalance Mm -hmm. of being profoundly engaged in doing stuff that is legit, that pulls them away from their primary sense of call and purpose. And again, yeah. This is why we look to Jesus as our master example. You you mentioned it at the very beginning. He provides an example before he does anything, before the day began, he would get up and reinforce his sense of purpose. Mm-hmm. And this is how come when he's navigating the crowd and they're saying, do this, do this. Jesus is like, I'm only doing what I see and hear the father saying and doing nothing more, nothing less. Mm-hmm. Um, and to many of us are like, I'm graced, I'm gifted, I'm coming. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You see what I'm saying? And that's yeah. it. And we find ourselves in this imbalance, and it, yeah. it, it can lead into some really, yeah, compromising situations. So. Right, yeah, you know, and just to say that for, for that example, you know, I was profound, to, or I was profane to be profound, yep. but it reminded me of what you were saying is an excellent point. Uh, it's like the Apostle Paul said, you know, so you have to put down the sin and the weight. That's it's it. not necessarily... That's what it. you're doing is going to lead you into sin or popularity for, for what, what That's we're talking it. about. It's just taking the time and effort and main focus away from what is supposed to you keeping the main thing, the main thing. Yep. So, yeah, I think yep. and popularity is like you said, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's yep. a bad thing whenever it starts to help you deviate from your sense of purpose. Of purpose. That's yeah. it. That's it. That's it. That was fun. You got me thinking about something when you had mentioned that, and I'm going to bring this up, even though this might give me a slap in the face. <laughs> good like, trouble. Good trouble. Yes, a good <laughs> trouble, and this does need to be said. Because, like, well, I'm gonna say. <laughs> like, even though, like, um, we can't please everyone, but we still make this effort to try to please everybody. Mm-hmm. And, unfortunately, and unfortunately, when we do that, we even take, like, what you guys were talking about is that we even go to the lengths of even committing sin, intentionally mm-hmm. committing sin just yep. to please everyone. And this is why I want this is what I'm gonna bring up. So on birthday like on birthday parties or dance parties, club like on club night uh 
club nights or uh, hanging out with hanging out with the girls or some type of social social event or I even dare say like uh, just going on in public like how many women do y'all know would dare go to any of those without wearing beauty enhancements? <laughs> Yeah, you get in trouble. Yeah, I know I'm in trouble. <laughs> I put it this way: I would say, <laughs> what I would say is, I don't know the answer mm -hmm. uh, for two reasons. One, I just legitimately don't know. But two, those ain't places that I frequent. But what I can say, and I think what your question is getting at, is that we do live in an era where body modification has become the norm mm -hmm. on multiple fronts. Mm -hmm. um, and in ways that we just have not seen. Maybe, and I want to be careful when I say that because I, I don't want to be the, the older guy in the room that's like, this generation, this generation. Because mm -hmm. it, it's possible that it was much more normative, but now with social media cameras, you're probably seeing it more in your face than maybe any time before. But what I do know is growing up, yeah, like when I was a, a shorty like you, it was like, you like girls having like weave was like taboo mm -hmm. you know what i mean um or guys you know getting hair pieces was like taboo mm -hmm. you know what i mean um michael jo michael jackson when he went through his phases and i say this with no judgment but it was like that was not lauded, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. And so now today it is it is it is not only acceptable, it's normative. And so um, I think you could assume that there's any kind of a social gathering mm -hmm. where the goal is partying. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, both guys and girls, you could assume that there's a lot of lot of lot of body modification happening to meet the expectation of someone mm -hmm. that you hope to have some kind of tryst with mm -hmm. you know what i mean and 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 i think what what makes that behavior likely is the kind of insecurity that we all carry inside mm -hmm. which is a discontentment with who who we are yes and then mm -hmm. makes us vulnerable to offset that mm -hmm. with body modification mm -hmm. to achieve significance mm -hmm which is a legit need, mm -hmm. the legitimate need, mm -hmm. um, the strategy to achieving it may be held in question, but the need for significance, mm -hmm. grace for that, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, and so, yeah, so I would, I would imagine, I would assume that the, that the number mm -hmm. is pretty high. I feel like it's a discontentment with not knowing who we are. That's it. I think that's yep. what it is. Mm -hmm. Let me break this down for you real quick and easy. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. This man has been married 50 years and got six kids. <laughs> this is the reason why he don't know the answers to this question. Right? He's out the game. He's out the game. Let me bust it down one time. Okay, go ahead. Let's bust it down. Bust it down. 37 and I'm single, right? Mm. Never been married. I don't have any children. Mm. I don't frequent these places out of habit. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. frequent these places because you sporadically you have to frequent these places. Yep. Without any body modification... And I'll take body modification all the way to tattoos and piercings. I agree. That's yep. what it is. Yep. Tattoos, piercings, anything more external than that. And then enhancements, you're talking as in makeup? Yeah. 95% are going to have yeah. something of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Men included. As the, Absolutely. I'm as, the, as the population, 95%. Yep. I, it's, I will be hard pressed. I know one person who is an adult white male over the age of 30 that has no tattoos and doesn't have an earring. Yeah. And I met him this semester. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then come from the culture we come from, you know the song, tap my whole body, tap, tap my whole body. Like, That's it. Yeah, so That's it's, it. it's beyond the norm now. That's you it. will be considered an outcast if you do not have one. I have somebody um, that I, <clears throat> I pour into his life, and I call him my nephew, right? He's just turned 15, got his first tattoo. Yep. That's how normal it is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. And, I, and let me just say this real quick. I want to be, because I don't think any of us at this table are not acknowledging it, but I, I don't want it to be implicit. I want it to be explicit. Mm -hmm. I do know, because I see the YouTube videos of men and women who um, are broken mm -hmm. because of some uh, physical malady. Mm -hmm. Their hair is falling out. Mm -hmm. 
and they'll go to some hair specialist that will use some hair stuff mm -hmm. and you you see dignity restored mm -hmm. at the end of the video yeah you know what yeah, i mean yeah, yeah. and i think i think those are modern day doctors mm -hmm. i really do um to walk around if you have alopecia and it's eating your hair to know that you could go somewhere to get that touched up mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. so that you can walk and not feel um judged and um like a misfit or mm -hmm. whatever like i think i think there is a place where technology does serve to help and restore dignity but then i do think there's also a way that it is used to supplement mm -hmm. um and and to to be supplemental um measures of beautification that lean the soul out mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. um I ain't got no hair. I once did. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And so when my hair, hair, right hair. that's it. Oh, yeah. So so when my hair started thin, I just I'd had too many friends that I saw, saw. They tried all kinds of things, and I just saw the more stuff they tried, the less it worked, and it mm. was tearing them up on the inside. And I'm just like, man, look, that ain't. That I'm not. I'm not gonna do that. So I'm just gonna let it ride. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, but there like if a guy had something or a girl had something that really kept them up at night mm -hmm. and it was a way to restore dignity mm -hmm. i think there is an element to that that is that is that is pure mm -hmm. um, but then i think there's a way in which it gets used beyond that is vain yep. that leans the soul out Yes. So and it's funny. I read an article not too long ago about the uh, the rise in the mm -hmm. people were buying. Um, excuse me. What am I trying Botox? to say? Botox? No, 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 no. Not Botox. Uh, tattoo removal. Yeah, exactly. Tattoo removal. Yep. Tattoo removal has the number sky, one is, skyrocketed yep. in the mm -hmm. past fiscal year. Yep. Why? Because it was popular. Mm -hmm. at one point so yep. people did it because it was trending yep. and nobody put this time and effort into realizing this ink is going to be on your body forever mm -hmm. that's so it so now you know and it was yep. they, they categorized it i won't tell you the classifications of what what class and socioeconomic class of people oh, yeah. that went back to go started getting these tattoos removed but i'm sure you could yeah, yeah, yeah. you could roll the dice yeah, yeah, and probably yeah, yeah. hit it that's so, it <laughs> yeah. yeah and like um on social media like Facebook and Instagram, like yeah, I do see some of our sisters who are using it to glorify God, mm -hmm. like using their gifts. So That's like it. um cooking or even like um giving some encouraging scriptures or even putting like um I put out this community, come join us. Yeah. This is the time and the place, like hallelujah, praise God for that. Yep. But at the same time too, unfortunately I do see so many other sisters who are using it to like post pictures or even videos of them wearing very revealing seductive yeah, clothing yeah, yeah. and then also dancing seductively and attracting the wrong crowd. That's and it. It's sad that some of them actually like attracting the crowd because of the attention it brings to them. It's yeah. like when you said that yeah. that need that sense of need of feeling important. Yeah. Is an is an element too. Like um of course wearing makeup is not a bad thing and of course wearing mm -hmm. makeup is not a sin. It's the intention to why you're right yeah yeah, yeah. Like, yeah somewhere it's just to have fun somewhere it's just because like oh let me do something for my husband yeah like, yeah I'm yeah to dress myself up fix my hair up mm -hmm. yeah put this on for put this on for him just on for him because yep. i love him and i want to do this for him and yeah complimentary versus sub, sub substitution yeah, don't forget a lot of women go and they ball out just for themselves because yes. they feel good about themselves too don't forget about that i yeah. them up that's yes. it that's yeah. it yeah. 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 Fancy, that's huh? it that's yeah. it yeah. yes that's exactly. it yes exactly too like um right there is another one too so like um is also i've also learned that there's this uh cult, there's this insecurity on culturally culturally infused female competition that so many women do with each other and only the lord knows why women do that to each other like a woman's strength is not found in the beauty enhancements of course not mm -hmm. her strength is found in the joy of the lord yeah mm -hmm. and when um 
there is great value in pleasing God. There is a great value in being loved by God. And yep. There is a great value in God's calling and being faithful to God. Yeah. And there is great value in fulfilling God's purpose that he has given to you. Yeah. Yeah. We accept all that and we will be so much more filled mm -hmm. with that, too. Yeah. And last question I want to ask you, gentlemen, is this like, um, how can someone find their purpose? Yeah. If they haven't found it yet, like yeah. what can they do? Yeah. The, 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 the simplest is ask. Mm. The, the question is, who are you asking? Mm, that's a better question. And, and so, you know, like, and I can't, I don't know who are the people, whoever's listening to this and what is their network like? And so, cause it is a dangerous thing when you ask the wrong question mm. to the wrong person. Mm. You know what I mean? You're going to get the wrong answer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But as I said earlier, the, the thing about both popularity and purpose is both of them, like there there is external reinforcement needed mm -hmm. to help you understand what you're good at and could potentially generate popularity and what your purpose is. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, <clears throat> um, so, you know, I would, I would say the f first it's, it's ask the father. Mm -hmm. uh, b b I believe, I believe, I believe God is not a concept. Mm -hmm. um, he is not a theory. Theory. He is not some vague deity in the sky that is void of personality and interest in our life. Mm -hmm. And wherever you are on your faith journey, whether you're at the very beginning or not quite there, um, I believe the first person you should ask should be God. Mm -hmm. And God has a way of speaking in a that is distinct. Mm -hmm. You know it's Him. Mm -hmm. You know it is God speaking mm -hmm. when He speaks, and and how God will speak. Uh, it may come to you in the form of a dream. Mm -hmm. It may come to you in the voice of a human that you never thought mm -hmm. it would be them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so I would say if anyone is grappling with this question of purpose to a first ask God, he is the safest, most logical place person to begin with. And then secondarily, <clears throat> if if there are people in a person's life that they like legitimately trust, they have history with this person. Mm -hmm. It could be a pastor, a mentor, a teacher, a coach, a really good friend. Mm -hmm. um, to, to go to them. And one of the ways you'll know that these are safe people to ask is if when you go to them and you say, man, I'm trying to figure out my purpose. If they respond like, it's about time. <laughs> <laughs> you know you are dealing with someone that has been hoping for you, praying for yeah. you, longing for you to come to this place. Okay? Um, you go to them and they respond that way or something like that, like you know you can have a conversation with someone that's going to help you go beyond just what your abilities are mm -hmm. and get to the deeper truth of who you are, mm -hmm. which, which has something to do with your purpose. So ask God and then ask the people that, that you know in your heart, like they have trust that, I'm sorry, you have history with them and you can trust them in that way. I would go go to those folks. Yeah. I'm obviously the same. The first answer is the same. Mm -hmm. Talk to the Father. Seek and yep. you shall find. Knock and the door shall, shall be open. Right? It. It goes back. I said it earlier in the podcast. It says uh, people want to know who they are. Know thyself. No, That's first it. know thy God. Yep. And then you'll find out who you are because our identity is in the is in the Father. Yep. And then with that, as that relationship mm -hmm. deepens and, and, and you get closer to Him, He'll relinquish your purpose for you further yeah. and further and more give you a piece at a time give you a piece at a time like me he gave me enough to secure my yes and then <laughs> that, and, that, and that was pretty That's much it. about about it so we That's had to keep it. going after that but for me i um i think it helped actually getting outside of my circle i had to yeah. go explore yeah i had to go turn over stones i had to go yeah. knock on doors poke at bricks yeah what is my purpose i don't know so it was easier for me to start eliminating yep. things versus pinpointing one. Um, yep. I'm 
I reverse engineer. I'm left-handed, so I do a lot of things backwards, right? Yeah. Uh, people ask you, what do you want for dinner? I, it's easier for me to tell you what I don't want yep. sometimes than yep. it is for me to tell you what I want. Yep. So, uh, yeah, my advice is obviously talk to the Father, yep. and then you're going to have to find some Holy Ghost gumption and go yep. out, go outside and start trying things, yep. start doing things. Because yep. there's no harm in failure. So, wise man, or is yeah, That's it. Fall yeah. seven times. That's gotta it. get up eight, right? That's it. So, yep. There's no one ever said that this is going to be like, oh, you're going to hit it one time and you're, oh, this is it. Found it. You know, no yeah. the purpose is, is it's a moving target, you yeah. know, because and it's 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 seasonal. Yeah. It's not really transactional, but it's it's seasonal, you know, and when yeah. the father wants to. OK, now this was your purpose for a season. Yeah. You always have to be sure to not attach too much flesh emotion to, yeah. to, to, to anything, because. If we are really living for him, he could say, all right, give yep. that up. It's time to give that back to me now and go do something else. Yeah. So I, I believe that that purpose is a, is a moving target. But, yeah, you have to find some yeah. – you have to find the audacity within yourself to, to go try some things, go look for yeah. some things. It's like almost like how hungry are you? You know, yeah. how much – how bad do you want to find your purpose? Go yeah. look for it. Go get it. Yeah, yeah. There is something to say about, like, I'm going to use the word – um, to describe some of what Adam is saying as a pivot, like it's a pivot. It's mm-hmm. a, and I want to be really careful because when you pivot, sometimes it predisposes you to do stuff that you probably shouldn't be doing. Okay, but but I'm gonna I'm gonna use your pivot generously though because sometimes just stop doing what you are doing and mm-hmm. doing something different. Mm-hmm creates a dissonance in your in your soul that forces you to be curious in a way that you never would have been yeah you know? yeah you put better words to it you, you know what i mean and so like i grew up in the inner city of chicago um urban hood realities were my norm um when i went to undergrad i went to a school in upstate new york rural new york mm-hmm. man th- that first those first three months just being in a different geographic location I started to hear the ache of my soul in a different way Mm -hmm. I was just I was just away from the city lights Mm -hmm. I was away from the the hustle and bustle now that was a pretty significant pivot Mm -hmm. you know what I mean and so I'm using an extreme example to make a a, a point um, because not everyone has the opportunity to go to some remote location, you know what I mean? But real practical stuff, like if you if you don't work out, mm-hmm. start working out, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? <laughs> if, if you watch TV all the time, I dare you, just take two days, don't watch TV, like nothing, Yeah. okay? Some of us will refer to that as a fast, mm-hmm. okay? Just abstain, all right? That, that simple pivot, you're going to hear your soul scream, Part of it will be, thank God, mm-hmm. because this is taking away, you know what I mean? But, but mostly you will begin to hear that deeper part of yourself just by pivoting and breaking the norm mm-hmm. of something that was really, really common, yeah. okay, will be good as you explore you know, your sense of purpose. And it's really, really practical. Don't cost you nothing to do that. Mm-hmm. Yes. So people always I, they say, "Oh man, I want to I want to change, man. I want to do this, I want to do that." And I challenge yeah. anybody that said, "I dare you to do something consistently that you know breeds results That's for it. 3 weeks." That's it. If you want to start changing, just start changing. Yep. You know, and, be, yep. and I use I do usually I'm a gym rat like we we've yep. established. I tell them, "Yep. You want to start changing, you're in a slump, uh, things aren't aren't really panning out the way you want it to." Okay, cool. You make that small pivot. Yep. I recommend the gym all the time. If you know something breeds results, yep. d- doing it consistently, I dare you to go do it. We yep. already know the outcome is going to be. And like my father used to tell me this all the time, yep. do the work first and the feeling comes. Yep. People say, I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. Nobody feels like doing the work. No one feels like, you know, <laughs> exactly. no one feels like chasing these dreams down. That's but it. if you do the work first, the feeling comes. Yep. Yes. So. Yep. And my brothers and sisters, as you have heard it. It has been such a great talk on this topic, and we pray that yes. what you have heard 
has given you a better perspective to why popularity should always be chosen over, I mean, purpose should be chosen over popularity mm -hmm. anywhere, anytime, because the deeper your relationship with the Lord is, the even closer you'll be to seeing what your true purpose is that will bring you a true fulfillment in your life. Amen. 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 And we all want you to find your purpose. We all want you to have that sense of belonging. And the Lord longs for you. That's Go it. to him. You'll find your purpose. But if you don't find it, like in two or three years, keep searching. That's it. Keep going to him and keep asking him. And go to the people who have been very supportive in your walk with God. Yeah. With that, too. Brothers, it has been such a wonderful having uh, you guys on oh the show. Oh, man. The yeah. pleasure is mine, yep. man. Yep. Appreciate you. Yes. Yep. And as you already know, I'm going to say, continue to pray for our program. And, of course, also hit that like and subscribe button. And then also we would love for you to join and be a part of the family because we got some great stuff coming towards your way. And how can people get connected to like the seminar? Yeah, like, yeah, yep. Yeah. So if you're interested in uh, Western Theological Seminary, you could uh, go to the website. Um, it's westernsem.edu, westernsem.edu. Um, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, once you go to the website, uh, if you go to the about page, it'll be like staff and faculty, click staff. You can scroll down, you'll see my picture. You can click that and you can email me um, directly. And um, But if you just want to express interest, we also have an interest card that you can fill out online. And that will also come to the admissions department, which will likely uh, prompt me to get in touch with you. So. I um, encourage you to do that. Again, westernsim.edu or do a Google search, Western Theological Seminary, and it'll pull it up to school right here in uh, Holland, Michigan. So, And there you have it. And this is Word Else Sex, the host of Fresh Talk, and we thank you so very much for joining us. And until we meet, come again, may the Lord renew your heart, rejuvenate your steadfast souls, and remember, continue to cling on to the Lord and not to the world. Amen. Amen. Have a good night, folks.